Hello, welcome to Zim Explore. <laughs> so here we're going to explore a bunch of the things that we can do with Zim. Let's go to the site now at zimjs.com and we will go grab a template. First, we shall reduce the background music. <laughs> so we'll go into the code section and we will hit the copy. That copies the template. We can close our browser and come here and paste. So here we are in, in Atom or any text editor. We've placed, we've gone up to the top, and we've gone up to the top again. <laughs> and let's change the title, the title to Zim Explore. Ooh. So what we're going to do is take a look at just a whole bunch of stuff that we can do with Zim. We won't go too slow. We won't go too fast. How does that sound? So we'll come on down. We're bringing in CreateJS, and that's a library that gives us the bomb, the bitmap object model, so that we can add things to a stage and, and, and put them in containers and have events on them and things like that. Wondrous. And then we're bringing in Zim 6.8.0, which adds more conveniences and components and controls to CreateJS to make things even easier. Here we are making a Zim frame, a new frame, and we're going to use the fit mode, which means it'll take this dimension, 1024 by 768, and make a stage that size, and then fit it to the browser window. It's the easiest way to code. There's a few other types as well. Full is good for mobile, where you want to make full use of the, um, the screen there. But then you have to do scaling yourself inside of Zim using stuff like Zim Layout and Zim Scale 2 and that kind of stuff. All right, so when our frame is ready, so what frame will do is it will make a canvas for us and then make a stage. When that's all ready, we have a, a ready event. Um, the on method is much like add event listener in traditional JavaScript, but CreateJS has given us a nice short word to use and also added a few extra goodies to that. So that's just like your add event listener in traditional JavaScript. Now this is all JavaScript, but um, we're adding things to it. So when the frame is ready, we call this function here, and it will do all of this stuff, whoop, to there, and there's the end of the ready. Afterwards, we end our script, we show a viewport and uh, we have an empty body. Oh, the poor body is empty. Must be hungry. Uh, we'll feed it with a canvas. Oh, yes. So once again, ZimFrame makes the canvas. When we're ready, we're ready to go. We've got a stage. Uh, the first thing we're doing is we're zogging, zogging ready from frame. That will show up in your console. So you can get F12 and that's short form for console.log. Zog. Sounds very caveman, doesn't it? We're given a stage property, a width and a height property, a frame, and we're storing that in local variables to make it easier to access. We're setting the outer color of the frame, that's everything outside the stage, to a darker color, and we're setting the stage to a lighter color. In the template, we're also given three links, one to learn, where we can see video tutorials, one to docs where we can find out all of the things that we can add and information about them and examples. And then bits, which uh, gives us 64 code tutorials on small little bits of things that we can build. Wonderful. <laughs> bye bye. A message says put your code here and you can delete this. And indeed, that's what we'll do. So um, once we will start typing our own code in here, and when we've built something, we will then update the stage so that we can see what we build. So that's one thing CreateJS does for us. It makes sure that we're very efficient. We can build a bunch of things and then update the stage rather than build one thing, update, build another thing, update, build another thing, update, etc. Uh, that would um, take processing power and also uh, drain the battery. So we have to update the stage anytime we want to see a change made and we can do that in batches. That's good. And that's our template. What did you think? Not too bad, huh? So we bring in two libraries there. We make a new frame. When the frame is ready, we get some extra information. We start typing our code there. 
That's pretty well it. And hey, let's do that. Let's start typing code. How exciting is this? So we will say a new circle. Let's make a circle. A crickle. <laughs> I really want to make a crickle today. A new circle. It will be 100 in radius. And we'll make it frame dot pink. Frame dot punk. Frame dot pink. There we go. Um, so Zim stores a bunch of colors, not too many, a dozen colors or so, on the frame so that we can be consistent with our colors. That's Zim's pink color. And then we can dot center on the stage, like so. Now there's a bunch of ways that we can add to the stage, and we'll talk about that. But for now, let's just see our new circle centered on the stage, shall we? We'll view in a browser, open in browser, <clears throat> and there she be. <laughs> Ta-da! Pink circle centered on stage. In center stage, we have a pink circle. Great. Now, we've done something called chaining there, where we take our method and chain it right on to the object, and we can continue to chain. For instance, if I continue, I can then say dot drag, like that. And that's a, a drag, that's a chainable method, the drag method. And we'll view that. Poodoop. And now we can pick up the circle and drag it. You may be used to something like this. Var circle is equal to a new circle. End that statement. And then we can say circle dot center. End that statement. And circle dot drag. And end that statement. And that would also work. That's the same thing. But that's, you know, more work. As a matter of fact, we don't even need to set a variable because we can chain. Oh, I should have just undid, undone, undoed it. There we go. Oh, uh, watch that semicolon. You don't want that there, though. We do not put semicolons as we go. And what this is doing is uh, here's our, our new circle object. We're dot centering it, and this thing returns the object. So this whole thing is the object still. And then we dot drag that. And drag returns the object, so this whole thing is the object. <coughs> Excuse me, bit of a cold. Hopefully I won't cough too much. All right, so that's chaining. Let's see. Uh, I mentioned there were multiple ways of adding to the stage. Another way would be to <coughs> add to the stage. Nice. We refresh, and there it adds the circle at 0, 0 to the stage. We also have the pose. If we don't want it at 0, 0, we can say where. 200, 200, for instance. And we save that. <clears throat> and now it's uh, positioned at 200, 200. Uh, what part of the circle gets positioned there? Let's take a look. So we'll show you. That's called its registration point. And if we dot outline, dot oot line, like so. Zim will outline our object for us. That's a bounding box. And it will also show the registration point, which is the circle. It happens to be in the middle of a circle. And then the X is its origin. That also is in the middle of the circle. That's within the circle. That's where 0, 0 is within the circle. So we position this at 200, 200. And um, because it's dragging, that will come up to the top, by the way. And also, this, the outline is a snapshot in time. So that's what happened there. Let's see. We've outlined. Uh, but how do we know that that's 200, 200? Let's add a grid. So we'll say new grid, like so. Sorry, I'm in, in the um, station here. And we're flying through space. And it's a little bit chilly. <laughs> we're far from a star. Too far from a star we are in our explorations. And so my right hand, after all of this mousing, is cold. Let's... Uh, how about you? Do you need a little shake? So there's a grid. And we refresh here. That shows us a grid on the stage. And that's percentage at the moment. But if we hit the P key, then it turns to pixels. And as I roll over there, you can see that that's 200, 200. So 200 in the X is to the right, 
and 200 down in the Y is 200. So zero zeros up here in the corner. Now I used to use a, a grid a little bit on occasion to position things, but now I use this other thing called dot po, uh, dot place, sorry, dot place, like that. Let's just get rid of the outline for now and the drag for now, just to show you that place works fine as on its own there. So if we save that and refresh, <clears throat> Now what we do is, is we're given the ability to pick this up and place it somewhere. Say right there, oh, that's where I want it. I totally want my circle there. Yes. And then we look in the console, so F12, and there is the position of where we placed it. So every time we drop it, it gives us a new number there. So I've copied that and I place it in here like that. And I no longer need place. And we refresh here. Hmm, I don't want to do any of that stuff. We refresh here, and there it is. It's down there. Cool, huh? So if you have something specific that you want to put in place, you can just add a place method to it, a chainable place, place method. And uh, then you can place, uh, see where it goes, and get rid of your place. So that's for editing as well. All right, that's not where I want it, though. <laughs> I really just want it <laughs> centered. <laughs> ah. And by the way, center will default to center on a stage, so you don't have to say center uh, on the stage there, or stage in there. There it is, centered. Nice, huh? Okay, what else can we do? We saw drag. We can also dot transform. We can transform the circle. And that gives it these uh, transformations. So there we go. And we can also drag from the corner. We can rotate as well and so forth. This thing's the registration point. So now if we do that, by the way, the registration point is what something will rotate about. And also uh, it's what uh, something scales about. Although in this case, the scaling is done from the opposite corner all the time, unless I think you hold down the control key. So now I'm held, holding down, nope, the alt, yeah, the control key, and it's scaling from the registration point. Okay, whatever. There's transformations. Pretty cool, huh? So that lets people uh, make transformations to objects, and then they can, you know, make drawings from it and stuff like that, or, or whatever. Let's take a look at another object. So that's a circle. Um, oh, we also have a rectangle. Let's just get that in the right place. Rectangle. Like that. And that expects uh, a width and a height. So we'll make it <laughs> 3200 wide. And we'll make it 200 wide. And <laughs> okay, fine. Well, nah. Let's make it a square. Why not? 200. And we will make it not frame.pink, but frame.blue. Equal representation. Yeah, pink and blue. So we then, uh, well, if both of those are centered, they'd end up in the same place, wouldn't they? So let's move them with a dot mov. So that is a uh, chainable method to do relative movement, not an absolute movement like a pose, but relative. So we can then move this one minus 200, and we will move this one as well, dot move MOV, and we'll move that 200. Save that up, refresh here, and there we go. We have a rectangle, which can be transformed, and a circle can be transformed. I don't know if you notice when we start, both of them are turned on, but then when we press on one, the other one goes off. It might be a little bit nicer to start with just one turned on. So what you can do is you can make a var transform manager tm is equal to a new transform manager. We don't even need to make a var, come to think of it. Uh, we have a new transform manager and we'll add the circle and the rectangle to it. So uh, if we're gonna do that though, we do need to have a reference to the circle. And var rect is equal to that, so that down in our transform manager we can easily add those two circle, circle, click, 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 and a rect are now added to the transform manager like so. 
So we save this and refresh, and it adds just as one, which is nice. But that's not all the Transform Manager can do. It, first of all, it makes sure that you only have one of these operating at a time. And uh, then the other cool thing is, is we can dot a persist onto that. So there's a persist method. And give that an ID of mm, ID, ID, ID. <laughs> there. That's a darn good ID, isn't it? It, 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 it. So what will happen now is as we close the browser, so if I refresh here and I move that one and then I refresh again, look, it stays that way, it persists. So even if I close the browser and open it again, open the browser again, there it is. So if I stretch the circle and turn off all the, all the transforms and hit refresh, that's how it is. Cool, huh? All right, that's the transform manager. Let's just quickly take a look at a blob. Our blob is equal to a new blob. Call her blob bob. Bob the blob. Ha ha ha. Hopefully you're not Bob. I'm sorry if you are. I mean, I'm not sorry you're Bob. Bob's a fine name. I'm sorry that I'm like it. Anyway, there's a new blob. We will dot center it on the stage. And let's uh, add that as well. Why don't we add that one to it? Now we don't have to transform the blob because the blob comes with these things called Bezier points. We'll give this one a new ID. We'll start over again. Why? Why, why, why? And refresh. There they all are. So I, I guess a default blob looks like that. It's almost circular, um, except you can then pick up these Bezier points and you can make abstract art. There we go. That's a bit too big. Let's make that bigger. So we're transforming that. We're transforming the blob. Nice! We have abstract art. Ooh. Uh, circle beside abstract art. This is you watching the abstract art in the gallery. And then we refresh. You're still there. You persist. It's great watching. So even blobs will persist. Um, you can record what a blob looks like as well. You, during authoring time, can record that blob and then pass that in as starting parameters. And then your blob will start off with that shape. It's also up to you whether you want to show those controls to people. Maybe you don't want them to control the blob. And then you would have your art made and they couldn't control your art. <laughs> well, but it's nice to let people control things, isn't it? Uh, yes. What we're all about interactive media to let people interact and build and create and that's one of the excellent 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 things that's in there's also a squiggle and you can let them build with a squiggle you can also um we can build uh, with a shape a zoom shape allows you to do all of the things that you can make on a canvas um, just quickly just so you don't you know forget we have components too var dial well, we don't even need to store it in a, a dial. We can just say new dial. There we go. And let it let us pose that on the stage. So we'll put it at um, I don't know 100, comma 100 on the stage like so. And uh, there should be a dial. So not only do we have circles, rectangles, triangles, blobs, squiggles. Those are uh, what we call the shapes and shape, which is a generic shape that you can, you know, line to and move to and all that stuff from the canvas. But we've got a host of uh, a dozen or more components, sliders, dials, color pickers, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, all right, so don't forget, with these components, we can control those shapes and, and do things. I think that's a pretty good place to leave this first one. Uh, what do you say? What do you think? Is that good? Um, I'm kind of thinking it would be a, a good place to end Zim Explore. Ooh. And look forward to the next Explorers. Maybe we'll do some tiling in the next Explore, shall we? And we'll animate some things. Oh, let's explore that stuff. All the best from Dr. Abstract. Ciao.